My greetings to everyone. Today we have started the new series on the financial literacy that is giving a basic idea of finance. In the first part of the lecture series, we have discussed the meaning of finance. That is, finance has an impact on both the corporate and individual investors about managing and raising the money, the risk and the uncertainty conditions which are very, very important. And it is also to highlight again that finance is not limited to big companies or the government agencies. It is equally important for an individual investors and the people who are operating their business at a medium scale and at a large scale. When you talk about a finance, it has to be a rational decisions because we are talking about raising of the money, the concept of interest, the concept of profit, the allocation of resources and so many things have to be prefixed before you finalize a financial plan. The finance allow an individual in the business and the government to raise the funds from their operations. So we discussed about the framework of finance which is not only limited to the raising of the funds, investment and also making of the decisions. And when you talk about a finance, it is not a field of its own. It is related to different fields also like psychology, economics, financial accounting, mathematics, probability and statistics. We discussed the different types of finance. Really the first one which we discussed was a business finance and it's concerned about raising the money by the business. We discussed the public finance which was basically the concerned with the raising money by the government, the private finance which is concerned with raising of the private entities like the business, individual investors and we talked about a direct finance in which the people they don't have to uh, contact anyone, they can just go to the directly the financial market, there is no involvement of financial intermediary and of course uh, uh, we have also an indirect finance in which the primarily role is played by the financial intermediary in terms of raising of the money uh, and giving the money from the lender to the, uh, the person who, is, who wants the money basically. So after doing the, the basics of this, we divided the concept of uh, the different types uh, of the loans. The one is the long term finance which is uh, you know a period more than 5 years to 10 years, to 15 years, to 20 years because here the aspects of uh, the long-term finance is to big purchases like fixed assets, land, machinery and building. We discussed the different types of long-term finance which is like equity, preference, venture, debenture and the long-term loans from the bank. We have a medium-term finance which is from 3 to 5 years and uh, the most important example here we would like to reiterate here is the advertising expenses. Then we have a medium term finance which is called as a preference shares, leasing, higher purchase financing, debentures and the medium term loans from the banks. Then we have a short term finance which is less than one year requirement and we also call it as a working capital uh, management. So now coming on to the sources of short term finance, we have the creditors, advances received from the customers, bill discounting and the short term loans from the bank. Now we are discussing the different areas of finance. The first is the capital markets and the capital market theory. The next is the financial management and the next is investment management. So we will be discussing these one by one. The first is the capital markets and the capital market theory. It focuses on analysis of financial systems, interest rates and pricing of financial assets. The financial systems include the financial markets, intermediaries and the regulators and the capital market theory helps the investors in selecting the appropriate financial assets. Now coming on to a very important uh, concept of financial management which deals with financial matters. The financial matters involves raising of the funds for both long term operating and day to day operations that is the working capital. It also focuses on owners wealth maximizing 
by using the optimum capital structure and the proper allocation of funds. Then we have the different type which is called as investment management. Investment management is the management of financial assets like investment in the various securities, bonds and the real estate to meet the predetermined objectives for the benefit of investors. Now it involves five primary activities which are very very important. Starting with the first, the first is setting the investment objectives followed by establishing an investment policy. The third step is selection on investment. The fourth is selecting the specific assets and the last is measuring and evaluating the investment performance. So this is how we do the investment management activities. We have seen the five activities in one frame to make the concept very clear to you. Now how do we set the investment objectives is a question. It involves analyzing the need of the client. The investor manager develops the investment plan based on investment objectives and this task starts with the portfolio making. The portfolio is an art of selecting and managing the group of investments based on investment objectives. So let me give you an example of a portfolio. You can see on the slide the first is the investment option followed by the amount, the percentage and of course the return. So this portfolio states the first is that we have invested in shares of 20,000 with the 20% 20 return and the return is high followed by bonds in which the total investment we have done is 15,000, the percentage is 15 and the return is low. The third is the mutual funds in which the investment is 20,000, the return is 20% and if you talk about a return, we call it as an average return. Then we have a fixed deposit of 20,000 with 20,000, 20% 20 return and the return here is average. Then we have an investment of a real estate. Then amount invested is 25,000. The percentage is 25. The return is high. So this is a very clear lucid example of a portfolio in which the investment is done in the different aspects like shares, bonds, mutual funds, fixed deposits and the real estate. Now we are going to discuss the next aspect of this that is the establishing an investment policy. It's a policy document that depicts the parameters for investing the surplus funds and the investment objectives. The level of risk and the return under the investment portfolio. It also guides towards managing and monitoring the investment program. Now we have to do the selection of an investment strategy. How do we do that? The next step in selecting an appropriate investment strategy is based on your investment objective. That is, an investor may choose a different strategy such as buy and hold, growth investing, passive investing, etc. Now selecting of the specific asset is also very very important. Under the asset allocation, we determine the mix of the financial assets under the portfolio. Now with the asset allocation, an investor needs to select the specific assets for investments. Now again, let us see an example which clearly shows selecting of a specific asset that is the shares. The first is Bajaj Auto which signifies the investment option. The amount invested is 30,000 and the percentage is 30. Next we have invested in Bharti Airtel Limited in which the amount is 15,000 and the percentage is 15%. 
Then we have CIPLA in which the amount invested is 5000 followed by a percentage which is 5%. Then we have Maruti in which the amount invested is 20,000 and the return is 20%. 20 then we have TCS in which the amount invested is 30,000 followed by a return of 30%. So, selecting a specific asset that is a mutual fund. So, let us have a look on this. The first is investment options in which the example which we have taken here is Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Funds where the amount invested is 30% and the percentage is 30%. The second is your Axis Mutual Fund in which the amount invested is 55,000 and the percentage is 55%. Then we have HDFC Mutual Fund in which the amount is 15,000 and the percentage is 15%. So, when you talk about measuring and evaluating the investment performance, at last an investor must evaluation of the performance its portfolio. Its involvement as far as the measurement the performance of the financial asset, risk and return and the rate of inflation etc. So, definitely when you have an investment plan the most important concept is to measure that how effective is your plan, how effective is your portfolio, are you able to have a good return with re less risk involved and of course, the rate of inflation also to be considered. So, these things are very important for an individual to be talked about and these aspects to be taken care of. So, when you talk about uh, the different areas of finance, we have the capital market which we have talked about, the financial management and the investment management. These are the three important pillars which needs a reiteration here. When you talk about the capital market and the capital market theory which focuses on the financial systems, the interest rates and the pricing of the financial assets and we have also talked about the financial systems which includes the financial markets, intermediaries and regulators and this capital market theory actually helps the investors in selecting the appropriate financial asset. Because if you are not able to select the appropriate financial asset, whatever exercise you are doing as far as the investment part is concerned will go heavy and you will not be able to achieve the financial objectives which you have set. You have to manage your uh, finances. So, in the financial management, you have to deal with the different financial matters for the business uh, like for the day to day operations, for the long term for the medium term. You have to make an optimum capital structure and the proper allocation of funds. Like for example, you are able to uh, not able to allocate the good funds for your daily operations. How will you sustain your business? Because you know, you never know your daily expenses are not optimized. Then of course, the whole portfolio, the whole investment plan again will be multiplied by zero and you will not be able to maximize the returns as far as the optimum capital structure and the proper allocation of the fund is concerned. Then the third important thing which needs a reiteration is the investment management. Investment management is all about managing the financial assets like uh, you know you talk about the securities, you talk about the funds, you talk about the real asset and you talk about the predetermined objectives for the benefit of the investors which takes into consideration very vital activities and if all these vital activities are done in the same direction with the uh, lot of rationale behind it of course day is not far when you will have the best investment activities ever so when you have to select the investment uh, management activity a very important step which you have to keep into consideration is your setting of the investment objectives. You have to analyze, see all the clients are not of the same types. Some clients have a different perspectives in mind, some clients have a different perspectives in mind. Some people can take the risk, some people cannot take the risk, 
Some people are medium term in terms of taking of the risk, aversion and taking. So, you have to set your investment objectives. So, it involves in analyzing that like uh, this is the type of a client and you know he is a high risk taker. So, when you are making a investment objectives for a client who is a high risk averters, definitely the perspectives, uh, the, the factors would be different from a person who is a very docile and does not want uh, any kind of risk in his investments. So, again the investment plan, the investment objectives for that type of a client would be different because he does not want to take risk. He really wants a very simple rate of return. So, for, the, for him the investment objectives would be different. So, that is why setting of the investment objective is vital and it is of paramount importance. So, this task starts with the portfolio making like all eggs should not be into one basket. We have to make a very effective rational portfolio making keeping into consideration the risk factor of the client. So, portfolio is an art of selecting and managing the group of investments based on the investments aspects like you share you know select the shares you select the bonds you select the the mutual funds uh, the fixed deposit the real estate as per the risk involved as per the return involved as per the amount involved and as per the perception of an individual who is able to take that type of a risk here so uh, investment policy when you talk about it depicts the parameters for investing the surplus funds and investment objectives, the level of risk and return under the investment portfolio. So, it also uh, guides towards managing and monitoring the investment program. So, once you are able to make your portfolio program, now is the time to select the investment strategy which is also a very very important point. Now, based on your investment objectives which you have set, you have chosen the different strategies that is whether you want to buy and sell, whether you want to buy and hold, whether you want the objectives of a growth perspectives in mind, whether you want a passive investment or you want an active investments and there are novel kind of strategies which are also present in this dynamic uh, changing business world. So, what kind of a investment strategy and policies will suit you is also very very important step to be taken into consideration. Now, we have discussed uh, uh, you know about selecting of a specific asset. Now, coming on to uh, from the larger to the narrow aspect of like this is my asset allocation and this is what I want in my financial assets under my portfolio. So, of course, uh, you will see the market, you will see the graphs of the different markets, how they are performing and definitely you will see the prospectors, you will see the candle and stick chart, you will see the different uh, dynamics, you see the business magazines, you see the you know the, the different blogs, you see the different investment sites and after collating and uh, contemplating the factors together, you will come to a decision which is helping you into a specific uh, selection of the asset like these are the shares which I want in my portfolio. Whether I want uh, a company like Maruti, whether I want a company like TCS, whether I want a company like Reliance, whether you know the Bharti Airtel is doing good or Bajaj Auto is doing good. So, coming on to from a larger to a narrower aspect of larger asset market to a specific asset market, there is a huge intelligent rational exercises which we have to do. And then of course, selecting the specific assets like uh, uh, you know when you talk about a portfolio, it is not only about the shares what we are talking about, we are talking about the real es uh, estate investment we talk about the mutual funds investments which is quite safe and the returns are also substantial and huge. You will come on to and zero down your selection of the mutual funds also like uh, whether for me the excess mutual funds are good, uh, the SBI mutual funds are good, 
the HDFC mutual funds are good or Aditya Birla Sun Life mutual funds are good for me. So all these parameters uh, will zero down to my selection of the mutual funds. And uh, all these things taken together in one frame, uh, an investor will evaluate the performance of its portfolio. Like uh, you have shares, you have mutual funds, you have debt, you have uh, any kind of uh, say mutual funds aspects. So, you will keep in one frame, calculate the, the profits which you are uh, getting out of your portfolio, whether your portfolio is effective enough to give you the right kind of a return. Uh, also, uh, you need to consider what is the rate of inflation which is going on into the market. So, once you are able to uh, make your portfolio, it is equally important to monitor your portfolio, to evaluate your portfolio in terms of the investments, in terms of the performance and comparing the two pillars of risk and return together in one frame. Only then you will be able to analyze that yes, we are into a good investment policies and good investments policies are also you know a kind of uh, the final decisions what you have to take for everyone. So, getting the basic idea of the finance getting the basic ideas of who the individual investors are, who the corporate investors are, who are managing the money, the individual investment factors, the corporate investment factors, the risk and return, the uncertainties, not putting all your bags in one basket, making a good portfolio. So, you know, when you talk about uh, these basic things, if these students are able to, you know, uh, catch the conceptual clarity on what the government agencies do when they have to invest, what the private agencies do, what they have to invest, whether the scale matters a lot because we have three types of scale, a small scale, a medium scale and a large scale. So, do the factors differ and the, the expenses differ, the sources of money differ, the emergencies uh, of you know uh, sa saving the money for the future or securing the money for the future which source of money is going to be better for us. So, you know, having a conceptual clarity on these basic aspects will help you building a good financial knowledge and which is a definitely a literacy for everyone. So, finance uh, is the use of economics principles to make a rational decision making involving the allotment of resources, investment of uncertain environment, etc. And of course, you have to be very clear in your mind whether uh, you have enough money with you. So, whether you are able to take a risk on a new venture at straight away at a large scale, uh, whether you want to be a, a shallow investor, a small investor with small, small money taking small, small steps and be very cautious about the, the sources of the funds from where the money is to be raised and uh, you know, a right kind of a decision making. So, uh, this is all about uh, from today's lecture. We have talked about uh, the different types of uh, what is a finance, different types of finance, uh, the, the public finance, private finance, direct finance, uh, the different illustrations, the concept of indirect finance wherein the role of the intermediary is uh, minimal and uh, the, uh, the portfolios, uh, the different sources of the long term medium term, short term and uh, you know these credentials uh, of the different conceptual framework will give uh, a good theory base for the new investors to the students who want to make their uh, career in capital market, uh, those who want to understand the basic concepts of what financial market is all about, investment market is all about, how you can monitor your investments and investments management activities, setting the investment objectives, how you are going to uh, monitor your uh, next step of the investment and uh, how you are going to select the specific assets, specific mutual funds, etc. So, uh, this is all uh, for today. We will build up from this base in the next lecture. Thank you so much.